Hello, everyone, and as always, thank you for tuning in to 88.3 FM WXOU, your home for Oakland Grizzly sports. We are coming to you live from the Oakland softball field here at beautiful Oakland University in Auburn Hills, Michigan. We are here for Cancer Awareness Series for our Oakland Golden Grizzlies taking on the Detroit Mercy Titans. I am Gavin Smolowski here on your play-by-play. To my right, my color commentator, Kayla Snell, in the studio. Harjan Buttar, our sports director. Kayla, nice day for softball, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful day out here, honestly. Sun, breeze, a little hot, but honestly, I think it's going to be pretty good. I can agree with that. It's a, it's a little, uh, temp's getting high here. Uh, a little warmer than we're usually used to, I think, in April. Um, and with the game, the Metro Series today, it'll be an interesting matchup. Oakland's got Sydney Campbell on the mound, and you, you tend to know what happens when she's pitching for us. That's for sure, honestly. As for each team, OU currently sits at 14 and 12 overall, 6 and 3 in the conference. That's good for third in the Horizon League. As for U of D, they've had quite the struggle so far this season. They are 1-25, 0-6 in the conference, which is last place in the Horizon League. Their last win being against North Alabama in March. And for our starting lineups tonight, U of D will be up first batting. Batting first will be Jenna Holt, second Trinity Fessler. Ending out the first three, Jordan Cavanaugh. Then Allison Dono, Alex ha Alexis Hoff, Jada Davis, Amanda Schick, Layden Laura, Alyssa Adams, and Olivia Warrington. And pitching for Oakland is going to be the ace, Sydney Campbell. On the mound for U of D is going to be Warrington, Olivia Warrington, pitching today in this beautiful afternoon. Honestly, I am looking forward to seeing Sydney play today. She's been doing really good this season. Yes, it's been a, Sydney. She's been one of the aces here. She pitches a lot for Oakland, and she tends to leave her mark on the game. Despite the departure of a previous coach for Oakland, Sydney has stayed strong with this program, and she's going to look to make something happen here, especially against a team you know that's been struggling like U of D. U of D trying to dig themselves out of a hole. They've lost the last 13 straight. In the last game that they took on Oakland, Oakland won that game 8-2, to two, and that was in the past spring. Oakland has won the last seven meetings here. That's two series in a row, and they're looking to extend that to eight today. Honestly, that, while that confidence boost can be good, it's definitely going to be something where they don't want to let it guide them. They really want to make sure they still stay on that A game, despite the confidence knowing that they're, they can have the capabilities. They with are very high likelihood of doing so. They yes. just got to make sure they stay focused. We saw that actually in the U of D uh, basketball game as well. The men's had a, Oakland men's team had a big edge over it. And they took, like you said, that mentality of saying, oh, we're going to win this game because they're not very good into that game. And Oakland, or I'm sorry, U of D nearly took that game. So same mentality can be seen here today. Up to bat to begin this game will be Jenna Holt for U of D. First pitch on the way from Campbell will be a ball. Pitch number two on the way. The pitch from Campbell. Swing and a miss. Beautiful pitch there. That'll put the count at one and one. Pitch third on the way from Campbell. Hits it right back at the mound. Beautiful grab there by Sidney. Tosses it over to first for out number one. Good contact there from Holt, but that was scooped up very quickly by Campbell. It shows good teamwork and good communication skills between Oakland. They all knew exactly what to move, when to do it. It seemed that Campbell was not even necessarily worried about that, just a casual toss over to first base to get the runner Holt out. Up now to bat will be Trinity Fessler, the center fielder for U of D. First pitch is in for a ball, 1-0 to begin the count. Second pitch on the way, called ball two, and it looked like that one might have caught the edge, but regardless, down 2-0 now in the count. Fessler up to bat. 
The pitch on the way from Campbell. That one sliced foul down the third baseline. Put the count at two and one. Sorry, this is my bad. This is Jordan Cavanaugh batting now for U of D. Pitch on the way. Check swing. They check over to first base. And he says, no go. That'll be ball number three now. Sorry, this is Fessler. Sorry, I'm getting mixed messages from my programming here, guys. That is my fault. This is who I believed was Trinity Fessler up to bat. Pitch number five on the way. It's popped up to the first baseline. Tracked by the Oakland outfield, and that'll be taken away by Macy Brown as she catches out number two. And now up to bat, my apologies, now up to bat Jordan Cavanaugh, the DH. Campbell already climbing through this first inning. Kayla, it's something that we said that was to be expected. Yeah, honestly, Campbell, he's a great pitcher. It's just you've got to make sure that you don't have that same almost ego coming in, playing against Detroit Mercy, knowing that, that they play well against them. That is a perfect word to describe it. Pitch number two on the way. That one's just outside. Called ball two. 2-0 two now on the count to Kavanaugh. Wind picking up here at our backs here at the Oakland Saw Ball Field. Could allow the ball to fly a little bit more than usual. Pitch, third one inside. And that's going to clip the corner. That's called strike number one. Kavanaugh let that one go. Looking for it to be a ball, but nice pitch there by Campbell to clip the corner. The pitch on the way from Campbell. It's high and outside. Ball number three. Three and one count now. Campbell looking not to walk the D.H. Kavanaugh. On deck, Allison Danu. And in the hole, Alexis Hoff for U of D. And that's a check swing called strike by the home plate umpire. Beautiful pitch there for Campbell. Count now full. Pitch on the way to Kavanaugh. And it's going to be chopped back to the second baseman. Picked up. Swing over to first. And that'll be out number three to end the top half of the first inning. And an easy one, two, three inning for Campbell to be expected. We are going to take a quick break here for the half inning from here at 88.3 FM WXOU. You're home for Oakland Grizzlies sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 88.3 FM WXOU here live from the Oakland softball field. We are down in the bottom half of the first inning. It was an easy one, two, three inning from ace pitcher 
Campbell for Oakland, and now up to bat for the Grizzlies is Brooklyn Plitz. First pitch on the way is a ball from pitcher Olivia Warrington, who will be on the mound today for U of D. Pitch number two is down the middle for strike one. Third pitch on the way from Warrington. Plitz, the left-handed batter in the batter's box for Oakland. Gets a lot of contact on that one, and that one's chopped into center field for a single. Good way to open the game for Oakland as Plitz gets all of that one, tosses it in the, into center. Now up to bat, Macy Brown, the second baseman for Oakland. We were talking, or you had brought up during the break, Kayla, that this ego that Oakland seems to have before the game, and and I do think you're very right. That's something we may see in this game. Yeah, honestly, especially with um, play style like we've seen, it's very easy for their confidence to go into that, to breathe each from just very confident, very, very proud in their play style to almost egoistical, as if they are guaranteed to win. It's something they got to be both keep in mind as well as use to their advantage. Yes, we saw before the game, you know, a lot of the players dancing. You know, they were really into the game. And yes, as you said, that's a confidence can be it, but ego, they got to be careful. U of D could come out here and shock them today and break that. I mean, you, know, you got a team looking to break a 13 game losing streak, so anything could happen today. Exactly. That's why Oakland really does need to be careful. Watch how they play and watch what they do. Big wave and a miss there from Brown. Puts the count at two and one. Lead coming from Plitz at first. She's looking a, a little bit of movement over there, possibly distracting the pitcher a little bit. Warrington takes a check over at first, tosses that one. It's deflected right back at us. Both just jump there. <laughs> yes, that ball hit right back at at us, bouncing off the uh, the fence. You good there, Kayla? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm good. You know, Giovanni's um, baseball story where mm -hmm. the ball just hit his computer. Yes, last season, anyone who was around listening last season may remember that our fellow broadcaster Giovanni Mosheri had a foul ball land on his computer, breaking his computer screen. He was not too happy about that. but And then that pitch will end in a strikeout, though. Macy Brown goes down. That'll be one down now. One out, runner on first. Plitz sitting at first. And Jen Kritzka takes up, the, up at home plate, the catcher here for Oakland. Pitch on the way from Warrington. It's right down the middle for strike one. Second pitch on the way from Warrington. Here, a lot of action over there. Again, maybe possibly to the confidence that OU has, but a lot of singing, a lot of action coming from the OU dugout. Not much coming from UAD side. That pitch is high and outside for ball one now. Count one and one here in the bottom of the first. For anyone just tuning in, score a 0-0 here at the Oakland softball field in this game between our Oakland Golden Grizzlies and the U of D Titans. Runner at first, Brooklyn Plitz. Pitch on the way, just outside. That's going to be ball number two. Two and one count now on Kritzka. Warrington let up an early single to begin this, to begin this game and looking to try to get out of that right now. No runners in scoring position, just a woman at first. Pitch on the way, and that one's tipped foul. Strike number two now, two and two on the count for Kritzka. Reese Ruhlman, the DH, sitting on deck with Taylor Carraway in the hole. Fourth, or fifth pitch of the at-bat on the way from Warrington. Kritzka, the right-handed batter. The pitch, right down the middle, big wave and a miss. Beautiful pitch there from Warrington to take down Kritzka. So after letting up an early single in this half inning, Warrington's got two strikeouts to bring it down to two outs. Now batting, number 14, Reese Ruhlman. Ruhlman up to bat now. One of these sluggers for this team. We saw a lot of her last season for Oakland. A lot of players returning for this Oakland University baseball team. One of the top teams in the Horizon League last year. They tend to be one of the top teams in the Horizon League every season. Honestly, I think it's the fact that they have so many returners that helps them the most in these games. They know how to keep the energy, keep the culture going to the newer members. 
Yes, I agree. You got, you know, people who have been here for a while and they know what energy you have to have to win. And they bring that on to the newer players. And it tends to help. And that one's ripped to left field. That one's back. Wall, and it's out of here. Home run for the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Woman rocks one over the left field wall. What a hit there, Kayla. That one was, I, I don't want to be cocky, but it looked like it was gone off the bat. Beautiful hit. Yeah. That's the kind of play style we learn to expect here from Oakland. So full contact from Woolman. Tacks two runs on the board, giving Oakland an early 2-0 lead as she's handed the paddle and swims through all of her teammates for two runs. So Warrington looked like she was trying to get out of this jam and leaves one hanging over the plate, and Woolman answers. Now up to bat for Oakland is the third baseman, Taylor Carraway. Pitch on the way from Warrington. That one way outside there. Ball number one. So two down in the bottom of the first. Early answer for Oakland. And we get the, the early game jitters out with an early lead is always nice for a baseball team. Yeah. Softball in this case. Pitch just outside for ball number two. Honestly, I think that early game, two home runs, or excuse me, one home run that brought two... Two women home, that, that's going to definitely cause Detroit Mercy to want to recover almost. You don't want to say it's necessarily a bad thing, but it may boost that confidence that Oakland's got even more. For sure. I mean, a hit like that? It's definitely something that remains to be seen, whether it's a benefit or I don't want to say detriment, but it could cause an overinflated ego from the Oakland team. That pitch is sent down the middle. Count now two and two to the batter, Carraway. Warrington trying to get out of this jam with two early runs left on the board. Campbell sitting in the bullpen, or in the dugout, waiting to take her place on the man. That one's way outside in the opposite batter's box. Full count now on Carraway with Maggie Murphy sitting on deck, the first baseman. Warrington doing everything she can to not leave something hanging over the plate like that last at-bat. Ruhlman really took advantage of it. And that one's Hit off the foot. Foul ball called by the home plate umpire. And Caraway will return to the batter's box to keep this account going. Two strikeouts already for Warrington. She looks to try to put away Caraway to end this first inning. Pitch on the way. And that's outside. It's going to send Taylor Caraway down to first, bringing Murphy up to bat. Now with two down still, it looked like Warrington was going to get out of this inning. Not necessarily the start U of D was looking for. They've had some serious struggles in this Horizon League. Nothing like we've seen from anyone before. And again, they have not won a game since March 7th. It has been over a month, Kayla, since this softball team has won a game. Yeah, that can definitely inspire them to want to play their artist. So Oakland needs to watch out. It was a 2-0 win down in Alabama where they beat South Alabama in that 2-1 victory back on March 7th, early this spring. And now up to bat, the first baseman, Maggie Murphy, for the OU softball team. Pitch on the way from Warrington. That one's right down the hole for strike number one. Warrington seems to be locked in now after a quick discussion with her coaching staff and a few of her teammates. Second pitch on the way from Warrington. Taking her serious time, and that one paints the corner. Beautiful pitch by Warrington. Maggie now down 0-2 in the count. Warrington looking to take the advantage and try to get out of this jam. Over at first base, Carraway sits after being walked. The pitch from Warrington, 0-2 count. That was way outside, ball number one. We are here in the bottom of the first inning here at the Oakland softball field. Score now 2-0, OU lead. Starting early off a beautiful Reese Ruman two-run home run to left field. That one's down in the dirt. 
Pitch number four is a ball. Count now two and two. Still two down here in this inning. Orrington looking to try to get out of this jam. Her pitch count now up to 22 early in this first inning. Not something you want to see. You don't want to have to go to your bullpen this early. But it looks like it might be possible. That one's chopped over just over the shortstop. And that's going to move the runner over to third. Caraway heading to third base. And Murphy stopping at first. And the single puts runners at the corners with two down. And now up to bat, Cameron Troyer up. Again, not the situation we were necessarily expecting here from Warrington. I mean, she was she was nearly a strike away from getting out of this inning with no damage. But now, with two outs, she has let up her two on home run, walked a player, and now the single from Maggie Murphy sends the walked Caraway over to third base. So now we got runners at the corners for OU. And Cameron Troyer, the center fielder, up to bat with Johnston in on deck. Pitch now on the way from Warrington. Shows bunt. Warner looks to go, and we're going to have a pickle between first and second. And almost a bit of a trick play there as OU tried to take the distraction away from the Caraway over at third base and try to get her home, but U of D picks up on the play and sends the ball back to the pitcher to go for pitch number two. It's an interesting play, Kayla, trying to distract the people over at third base for Caraway to get home, but... Just a good read there by U of D to slow that down. Honestly. Troyer now up to bat. The center fielder. Pitch on the way from Warrington. And that's right down the middle for strike one. Easy pitch there. So Oakland up 2-0 with three hits on this game. Campbell just waiting to get back on the mound. Pitch number three on the way, 1-1 one, one count to the center fielder, Troyer. That one just outside, called ball. Count now 2-1. and one. U of D looking to get out of this inning, not having much luck right now. Oakland trying to get back around to their first couple batters in their lineup, and that's not a situation you want to be in as a starting pitcher in the first inning. Warrington with pitch number four on the way. And that one... Hits the ground in front of home plate for ball number three. Count now three and one. And in danger of possibly walking Troyer here and loading the bases for shortstop Jenna Johnston. She is sitting on deck eager to get at bat against Warrington. The pitch on the way. That one's bounced over to third base. Good pickup by the shortstop. Whipped across. And that one's going to be late. And the call at first base is safe. And coming home is Caraway. To second is Murphy. That's going to knock a second, a third run, I'm sorry, now. And Oakland currently leading 3-0. Now runners at first and second, one in scoring position, two down. And, and I hate to keep bringing it up, Kayla, but Warrington was nearly out of this inning with no damage. But now Oakland leads 3-0 with runners still at first and second and Johnston up to bat. Yeah, Warrington needs to... To be able to call with. Good pitch there. And that's going to be strike number one on Johnston. Warrington, she seems to be jumping in early to these at-bats, but is slowly losing it as the at-bat continues. Honestly, I think it's just the nerves at this point of ha having walked players, the runs. It's just it's not a good situation for anyone. And a chopper there to shortstop is whipped across the diamond for out number three. And Warrington finally gets out of this inning. Not necessarily the start that she or U of D wanted. And we're going to take a quick break here from WXOU. Score now 3-0. Early Oakland lead off four hits here in beautiful Auburn Hills, Michigan. We'll be right back for the top of the second.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 88.3 FM WXOU, your home for Oakland Grizzly sports here at, at Oakland University in beautiful Auburn Hills, Michigan. We are live from the Oakland softball field for a softball Metro Series matchup between our Oakland Golden Grizzlies and the U of D Titans. I am your play-by-play today, Gavin Smolowski, and again, to my right, Kayla Snell on color. And it has been a very interesting bottom of the first. Pitcher Warrington for U of D looked like she was going to get out of the inning, but Oakland able to tack on three, starting with a beautiful Reese Roman home run to left field, which brought in two. And now, finally, the inning does eventually come to an end. And now up to bat for U of D is going to be the four-hitter, Allison Donahue. Donahue, and returning to the mound is going to be Campbell for Oakland. Sidney Campbell, an easy one, two, three inning to end the first. And U of D starting down 3-0, not really the start that you want. Pitch on the way. That one's going to be just outside, count now two and two. A couple of fans here did not believe that was a ball, and I can't say I agree. I, mean, I can say I agree with them. That one looked like it got the corner, Kayla. Right now, it looks like Detroit Mercy is trying to just work off those nerves of the first inning. And pitch in from Campbell. Again, looked like a strike. Just low call by the home plate umpire. Full count. Yes, and the nerves, which, you know, being a team that has struggled this season. Coming into the game, you know, you're, you're probably pretty nervous. But starting down 3-0 is not necessarily what you want. That ball's chopped over to short. Bad hop, but it's picked up well by shortstop. And Jenna Johnston tosses it over to first for out number one. Up to bat now is going to be Alexis Hoff, the second baseman here for U of D. Campbell Alexis absolutely Hoff. dealing per usual here at the Diamond. Mm -hmm. But something we tend to see with him is a lot of strikeouts. And But so far, a lot of balls have been put into play, but the interior defense along the base pass of Oakland has been fantastic so far. Pitch on the way from Campbell. That one's inside. Check swing. She does not go. Ball number one. And now, up to bat again, Alexis Hoff, the second baseman. The pitch on the way from Campbell. That one's a little high in the face of Hoff. She backs off for that one. That's going to be ball number two.
Hello, everyone. And how are we not connected? There we go. Let's try that. We were just connected, so. All right. That's not connected, so we're just going to we're gonna come back one more time. You hear us, Hard? Are we back? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 88.3 FM WXOU. And sorry for the delay and slight issue with our connection as we are connected to my my phone to give us connection out here from the OU softball field. And unfortunately, due to the extreme heat that we have been, uh, that we've had down here, Kayla, my phone overheated and we lost connection. But we are back. Sorry for the technical difficulties. To end the last inning, Sidney Campbell went down. Or, sorry, Sidney Campbell took out the end of the U of D order. And we are now back with the runner on first base. Score now 3-0 still here at the Oakland softball field. Back up to bat. And that bunt goes foul from OU. Warrington remains on the mound. And we're going to have a quick stoppage and play here as that ball goes just foul. Pitch now on the way. And it's going to be a called strike one. Count now one and one. And up to bat now for Oakland is going to be ball. That one's just bunted foul. Sorry. And we are that is issues a bit, but we do seem to be up to bat is Harrington and Warring. Miss. And now with one down and Maddie Harrington over on first. Brown steps into the batter's box from the left side. Pitch on the way from Harrington. Got a risk getting the play call on the way. Pitch goes high. Runner goes. 
taken off for Oakland. And that's going to be called out. Beautiful play there by catcher oh, Alyssa Adams to throw out the runner, and that's going to bring two down now. Good play from U of D. Takes the runner off the base path. And we are now back up. Pitch on the way. That one's lined out, and that's going to be a single. Good play there from Macy Brown. And that's going to put a runner back on first. Well, stream now back up. Nice to know, Kayla, we got some people listening here at the OU softball field. We just had a fan come up and let us know he's been listening. So thank you to everyone who tunes in to 88.3 FM. We appreciate you for listening. Two down now, runner back at first, and up to bat is going to be Jen Gritska. Big wave and a miss there. Strike number one on the way. Score 3-0 here at the OU softball field. U of D down to the Oakland Golden Grizzlies in the bottom of the second. Pitch on the way from Harrington, trying to get out of this inning without letting any go. And that one's lined over to third, bad hop. And that's going to put runners on first and second. Single there from Kritzka. And that brings up who else but Reese Roman. Roman had a nasty two-run home run in the bottom half of the first that she sent just under the scoreboard over the wall of the left fielder. And she's now up with runners at first and second. And they get the catcher and Arrington are going to have a quick discussion. Adams have to let them know they're going to have to play this one differently as Roman was able to read that first at bat. Quick discussion at the mound. Comes to a abrupt close. And up to bat, Roman. Pitch on the way from Harrington. So the wind is picking up here. <laughs> Not what you want for Harrington, especially a power hitter like Roman up. Wind at the back. And that one right down the middle. Confidence there from Harrington to steam that one in there for strike number one. Honestly, it is not looking good for University of Detroit Mercy right now. But they still can um, bring it out if they keep their focus and don't let at their own nerves distract them. Yeah, only down by three. It's very doable here. But... Again, they're going to have to go through Campbell if they're going to want to come back into this game, and she does not seem to be letting up early. Pitch on the way. That one's line foul. Count now 0-2 behind in the count is Ruhlman. And Warrington just attacking Reese Ruhlman on this at-bat. Not worried at all about what happened in her first at-bat. And honestly, that's the way to play it. You can't let the previous plays distract you from the now. Pitch on the way from Warrington. 0-2 count, two down, runners at first and second. The pitch. And swing and a miss, and Warrington takes down Ruhlman. What a play there to end the second inning. Warrington getting out of the jam, despite letting up three in the first, lets up zero in the bottom of the second. And this game is still within the grasp of U of D. We're going to take a quick break here from 88.3 FN, and WXOU, and we'll be back with you shortly.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the OU softball field for the top of the third in this Metro Series matchup between our Oakland Golden Grizzlies and the U of D Titans. It was an explosive first inning for the Oakland offense, putting three on the board, supported by a 2-1 home run off the bat of Ruhlman. But now, Warrington, the pitcher for U of D, locking in in the second half of the second, bringing down the Oakland offense allowing no hits, or no runs, I should say, but back on the mound for the Grizzlies is Ace Campbell, Sidney Campbell with the pitch. That one just inside, count now two and one. Campbell not looking to let up against this U of D organization. At bat for U of D will be Amanda Schick, the third baseman. That pitch on the way, waving a miss. Good pitch there from Campbell. Two and two count now. Base is empty. None out. First at bat here of the third inning. Schick pitch on the way from Campbell. And that one is off the leg of Schick. Hit by pitch. Puts the first batter on the base path of the game for U of D. And with a runner aboard, up to bat is Jaden Laura, the first baseman. U of D finally getting something going. This is the first... First batter now on the base path. Despite no hits, Campbell throwing a perfect uh, perfect game so far. Or no hitter, I should say, so far. That hit by pitch ends her perfect game. Pitch in. It's going to be strike at number one. That one flies by the first baseman, Laura. She steps in. Pitch number two on the way. Just inside. Nearly picking off the runner at first. Good play there. Heads up play by catcher Jen Kritzka. Tries to throw it down the first base line to pick off Schick at first, but with no, no success there, ball goes back to the hands of Campbell. One and one count. Runner on first. Laura into bat. The pitch from Campbell. Just outside. Called ball. Two and one. Campbell. Having a bit of an issue here with Laura. We've seen her pretty much steamrolling the U of D offense in this game, but putting the runner at first, big wave and a miss. Putting runner at first may have thrown off her tempo a little bit, but down now, count two and two with no outs. Jaden Laura steps in. The pitch on the way from Campbell, the 2-2. And that's lined over to short. They get one at first. Sorry, one at second and go for the double play at first with no success, but still one down, and that now puts Laura on to first base as they catch Schick at second base. Up to bat now, the catcher, Alyssa Adams. She had a pickoff in the previous top of the, or bottom of the inning to get some Oakland runners off the base path, and she now steps into bat. Adams batting 136 on the year. And so far, a great game being pitched by Campbell. First pitch comes in for strike one. We got one down here in the top of the third. 3-0 lead for Oakland over the U of D Titans. Pitch on the way, Campbell. It's a little low. That's going to be ball number one. One and one count now with one down. Adams stepping in. The right-handed batter catcher for this U of D squad. Pitch on the way from Campbell. Wave and a miss. Strike number two. Sydney tosses one in there for an easy strike. Seem to have no trouble with this University of Detroit Mercy offense. Adams digs in. The one-two pitch. Shows bunt. And that one's going to get called off. And it was bunted off home plate foul. That's going to be out number two now. As Laura returns to first base. It may have hit. It may have hit the batter. It looked like it landed on home play, which I'm not sure if that's foul, but they're going to call her out regardless. I'm not sure if you could see what happened there, Kayla, but it was out of my view. No, I could not see what happened there. A poor bunt gets out number two without advancing the runner, and this is going to bring up Holt now back up to bat. 
Lined over to short, picked up easy, flipped across the base, and that's out number three as Johnson tosses one over. And that'll end the top of the third. Fantastic inning there. And we're going to stay with you during this half of the inning. So, Kayla, it's been a fantastic game so far from Campbell. What do you think she needs to do to keep this going? Honestly, Campbell just needs to stay focused and keep it confident. Keep going exactly as she's going and stay the course. And confidence doesn't seem to be much of an issue with her. She seems to be very focused on the game. I play. And a, a team coming in, you know, a, a team with not quite the best record like U of D is really struggling with an ace like her. Honestly. And the 3 three runs in the first inning off the bat of Ruman was perfect, but Warrington returns to the mound again. As she was able to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say rifle through the second half of the second. Allowed a lot of, a couple hits and left runners on base. A little bit of an assist from her catcher, Alyssa Adams, who picked off one at second. But despite the extra hits allowed, she doesn't allow any runs. So keeping U of D in it and the coaching staff for Detroit Mercy allows her to stay on the mound to try to work through this latter half of the the order leading off for the Golden Grizzlies will be Taylor Carraway. Carraway was walked in the first. She ended up coming home off a later Troyer hit. Pitch now on the way. Wave and a miss for strike one. Warrington seems to be settling in a little bit here for Detroit Mercy. The wind again picking up. Beautifully warm day, but the wind has seemed to be a bit of an issue. Pitch now, and it catches the wind, but just catches the outside for strike number two. Down on the count is Carraway. 0-2 count. Pitch on the way from Warrington. E-0-2 pitch. That's wide. Ball number one. One and two count now. Carraway, the third baseman up to bat. He was walked in her first at bat. Played a, played a great possession and ended up getting home on a later hit. Pitch now on the way. Deflected foul. Just barely getting a piece of that to stay alive. Carraway batting a massive 314 this year with an on base percentage of an astounding 47 or 41%. She gets on base for this Oakland squad. The pitch. That one's popped up to first base. And that'll be out number one as the second baseman, Alexis Hoff, calls it off. And one down now for Warrington. Settling in against this Oakland order. This game break... Brings us to WXOU Sports on YouTube. Subscribe to WXOU Sports on YouTube for all things sports from your favorite student radio station, interviews, highlights, and full game broadcasts. Just search WXOU Sports on YouTube and hit subscribe. Ball lined over to third. Nice play by the third baseman. She's thrown out. And a quick at-bat there from Murphy will bring two down. If Oakland prevails in this game and ends up with the win... Tune into YouTube for a post-game interview with our color commentator, Kayla Snell, and one of the Oakland softball players. Pitch now on the way from Warrington. Up to bat. Cameron Troyer for Oakland. The first base, or sorry, the, the center fielder. Pitch, strike number one. Warrington settling in early for U of D now. Sometimes it's even said you need something like, you know, a home run like that to get the nerves out of you. But it seems like Warrington really isn't worried about this team anymore. No, oh, whatever happened between the second and third innings is what gave her the confidence, it looks like. Because the way they've been playing, it's almost like a complete 180. You could even say maybe a little bit of attributed to the uh, the offensive half as U of D finally gets someone on base and they, they get some action against Campbell. You know, it's it's tough to sit there as a pitcher and, you know, watch your offense struggle and not get anything to back you up. But once you see your offense get going, it's like, okay, these guys got my back. I can settle in in these next innings and play well. And it seems like Warrington has adjusted to that. Exactly. And the ball hit the dirt there on the last one. So new ball is tossed to the hands of Warrington. Troyer 
steps back in. She's one for one. She got the hit and the RBI earlier, which batted in the walk to Taylor Cowway. That one's lined to center field, and that'll be a single. Solid contact there from Troyer. She gets a whole bat on it and sends her over to first. Now up to bat will be Jenna Johnston, the shortstop. We've seen a lot of action from her on the defensive end. She's had a lot of balls dribble her way. Warrington was having a good early half to this half inning, but big bat there from Troyer sends someone to first. That's going to be the eighth hit of the day for this softball team. Warrington checks the play call. Pitch on the way, right on the middle. That's going to be strike number one. Warrington settling in 0-1 count. Two down here in the bottom of the third. And over at first base is Troyer, the runner for OU. That pitch on the way. And it's going to be popped up foul. That one tracked by U of D and just barely out of play. And not able to get to it. Jaden Laura looked like she almost got under it. But Johnston will return to home plate to continue, continue her at bat. Count now 0-2 after that foul ball. Two down, runner at first. Warrington on the mound still for this U of D squad. Looking to break the losing streak that they've had. The pitch, that one's sliced. And that one's easy out at second base. Alexis Hoff getting under another one. And that's going to bring the third inning to a close. So, Warrington, after letting up an early 3-0, three runs to start this game, has locked in for the bottom of the second and third. And that'll bring us to the top of the fourth. We're going to take a quick break here from WXOU, and we'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back, everyone, to the OU softball field for the top of the fourth in this Metro Series matchup between our Oakland Golden Grizzlies and the University of Detroit Titans. After this early three-run first for Oakland off the room and two-one home run, this has been a tightly contested defensive battle through the second and third. No runs scored. Oakland putting a few women on base the past few innings, but Warrington, the pitcher for U of D, has really locked in. And has made a difference here and hasn't let anything go in the last two. Up to bat first for U of D will be Trinity Fessler, the center fielder. First two pitches are a ball and a strike and then a waved strike number two. So one and two count with none down. Base is empty. Pitch on the way from Campbell. Lined over to third, and that one's going to be called foul. Coming back to home plate will be Fessler. Just ahead of that pitch from Campbell returns her to home plate. Count one and two. Pitch on the way from Campbell. This one lined and kept in play to short. Good pickup by Johnston. And that one's over to first. And that'll be safe at first base as that ball is thrown in the dirt. And that'll be the first hit of the game for U of D. They're going to open the hitting here on the top of the fourth with a runner at first. It really does look like Detroit Mercy has finally got that gust of wind they needed to get that confidence up. And now Kavanaugh up to bat, the DH. Yes, I think that's important. We had discussed last inning that that can also definitely help a pitcher. And, well, they didn't get any hits last inning. U of D got some runners on base, so, you know, 
It's, it's kind of like, I, I've said this before on baseball broadcasts, and I'll say it again. It's kind of like when you're playing basketball and you're not hitting shots, and you want to just get to the free throw line and see one go in. Once you, once you see success for your team, you can take advantage of that. That one's dribbled over to second, and runner got it, picked up at second, but the double play is not converted as that ball is also thrown in the dirt. So that'll be a runner now at first place on fielder's choice. And my correction, they're going to chalk that first batter up to the first player that got on base. They're going to call that an error. So we're going to still remain with no hits on the day for U of D. So Campbell, despite having, at this point, nearly four different runners on base, still has her no-hitter going. She had a walk last inning, uh, an out due to fielder's choice last inning, an out due to fielder's choice this inning, and an error thrown to the first batter. So now with one down, Detroit Mercy has no hits with Danu stepping in to bat the, D, or the, uh, the infielder. Sorry, left fielder. So... Detroit Mercy trying to get something going now. Campbell settles in. She's got two strikeouts tonight and 11 batters faced through three innings pitched. No hits on the night from Detroit Mercy. Pitch on the way from Campbell. One down, runner at second. Check swing on the strike. Strike number one called by the home plate umpire. With one down, Allison Donu up to bat. She's batting 258, one of the higher hitting players of this of this Detroit Mercy offense. You see a lot of the uh, a lot of the players batting under 200 for U of D, but Donu is one of those exceptions. Pitch on the way from Campbell, the 0-2 called strike three, and down goes Donu. So, two down now, runner sitting at first base. And Alexis Hoff, the second baseman, steps in. Campbell now, as she is dealing through these innings. She's faced 12 batters and has no hits allowed. First ball called strike. Campbell settling in here, top of the fourth inning, 3-0 lead for the Golden Grizzlies. Pitch on the way from Campbell, the 0-1. One's up high in the grill of Hoff for ball number one. And we're going to have a pinch runner set in at first base. Alicia Avina steps in for the Detroit Mercy squad. That pitch, wave and a miss. Beautiful breaking pitch there from Campbell. Count now one and two. The one-two pitch on the way. Two down here in the top of the fourth. Campbell looking to end the inning. That one's in. Deflected foul. And now, still sitting in the bat is Hoff. Alexis Hoff batting 170 this year. One-two pitch on the way with two down. Sidney Campbell. On the mound, the pitch, and called strike three. Down goes Hoff, and that's the end of the inning. Beautiful play there. We're going to stay with you again through this top of the, through this change to the bottom of the fourth. And OU now sitting with a 3-0 lead still, and still, Kayla, not a single hit. Despite runners on base for U of D, no hits so far against Sidney Campbell. Honestly, Detroit Mercy is struggling against her as both a pitcher and just in general with their offense right now. They're having any sort of issues getting runners on base. To, I mean, the few times we've seen them, they've been from a walk in an error. So they're getting people, they're, they're getting women on base, but it just hasn't been much, much after that. They're kind of leaving runners stranded. And Campbell, we, we had discussed between the, uh, between the third and the fourth that there's a chance we could see her go the complete game today. I mean, we're in the fourth now. Softball only going seven innings, so she's only got three more to close out. And at this rate, it's something that you can expect. And Warrington will remain on the mound as she has played a fantastic latter half of this game so far. Burning through the OU offense. 
And leading off the bottom of the fourth for the Grizzlies will be Maddie Harrington, the left fielder, number seven. She is one for one in this game so far. Pitch now on the way from Warrington. That one just outside, ball one. Harrington. Locked in on the right side of the plate. Pitch on the way, fouled back. It's going to be one and one to open up this bottom half of the fourth. Pitch on the way from Warrington. The pitch. That one just low. Called ball. Count now two and one. Harrington. One for one on the day. And that one's rocketed just foul off the third baseline and she'll return to home plate. Harrington batting 221 this year. This OU bat this OU offense has been very active so far this season, which is one of the reasons they're six and three in their conference and good for third. Honestly, OU has a great team set up. They're just confident. They are communicative. They they play well. And that I think is leading to a large boost in this game. That one deflected off the glove of the catcher. Foul ball keeps the count at two and two. And that comes, I believe, Killer, we had discussed this already, but it comes from the veterans of this team. I mean, you got players who have been along this organization, Macy Brown, Kritzka, Ruman, and Campbell for quite a while. And it really translates well when you have people like that who know how to play the game and have been here doing it at the collegiate level for a long time. Yeah, honestly, it does help because then they can sort of guide the newer players through mm -hmm. it and acclimate them to Oakland culture in the game very quickly which in turn makes them get a bit more unified. Mm -hmm. and, and for anyone who's not aware of uh, the Oakland culture for softball, uh, I don't want to boost Oakland's, you know, I don't, I don't want to boost anything, but it's a winning culture. Oakland has a fantastic softball and baseball program, particularly softball. They've had a great, great team over the past years. And so when you come to an organization that's used to winning, it's great that it translates so quick. That one lined, beautiful play. Out, but diving catch there from the right fielder for U of D. Brings in out number one. Jenna Holt catching that one for U of D. And that's going to bring up Brooklyn Plitz, the top of the order, back around for OU. One down now. Harrington remaining in. Plitz one for two on the day. Pitch on the way from Arrington with one down. That one's lying the other direction. And that's in the gap. Beautiful hit. Going for second. Diving play. Slides in a second. And Brooklyn Plitz has got a double. With one down now. Runner at second. Macy Brown, the second baseman, trots up to the plate. Warrington has had a fantastic game after that first inning. And I think that's the first big play we've seen off of her since that room in home run. So... I could have rattled her a little bit, but despite letting something up early, like the Ruman home run, she's played well after that, so we'll see how she answers here in this at-bat. Brown now steps in. The first pitch, just outside. It looked like Plitz wanted to take third base on that play, but tracks back. Pitch now on the way from Warrington. It was a called ball, 1-0 and count. The pitch from Warrington, waving a miss. And catcher Adams for U of D continuously checking that runner as Blitz looks like she wants to go for third. AC Brown, one for two on the day with a hit in her first at bat, but she also went down swinging. Next pitch just outside again. Two and one count now with a runner at second. AC Brown up to bat, the second baseman. Batting an astounding 232 for this softball team. A lot of bat on that one, and it drops just in front of the left fielder. 
And a good read there by Macy, and she turns that should have been single to a double. So now two runners in scoring position, one and two with one down. Good play, good base running there for Macy Brown as she hits the single, recognizes that the left fielder is throwing it home and decides to take second on that one. What a play for the OU offense. Up to bat now is Jen Kritzka, the catcher, one of the leaders of this OU softball team. Kritzka batting, dare I even say it, an unbelievable 423 on the season. No one's fouled back off the fence. And with one down, runners at second and third in scoring position. This is a tough situation for this UD defense, and, and this, is the, this is the spot where games can blow open. The pitch on the way from Warrington. Line foul just a little early. That one could have been damaging if it was hit in play. But Kritzka setting in. Very confident at bat against Warrington, a pitcher who's now got 78 pitches in this game. Pitch count getting rather high. You got to have a lot of confidence in Kritzka's shoes. Bat resting on the shoulder. Pitch on the way. Just inside. It's ball one. Count out one and two for Kritzka. Warrington trying to get out of this jam. A fly out here from Kritzka. Could advance a runner home, tacking on the fourth. So just trying to get the ball into play. That one fouled back again. Flies over the heads of us. And that's going to keep the count at one and two. One two pitch on the way from Warrington. Pitch count on up to 79. Pitch on the way. That one's low, but there's contact. Ball bouncing off the chest of the shortstop, and Kritzka is going to be safe at first. And that's going to bring a runner home. Score now 4 3. Tack that one on the board. Four, sorry, going from 3 2 4. Oakland's up 4 0 now in this game. Beautiful play there from Kritzka. Run batted in. Brings up Reese Ruhlman with runners at the corner. One down. Ruhlman had that home run in the first inning, but went down swinging in for second at bat. And Warrington now coming together. And it, I believe we are going to have a pitching change on the side of U of D. Claire Borg looks to check in. We will stay with you during this pitching change. Oakland in a great situation now. Runners at the corners with only one down. And the slugger, Ruhlman, up to bat with a new pitcher. Be sure to stay tuned in all season long for extended coverage of Oakland Grizzlies athletics. WXOU is proud to be working with some of the finest managers, coaches, technical staff, and players that the NCAA has to offer. Continued support by you, the fans, helps us become better media and more refined representation of young athletes living their dreams. From where we restarted this past October... To where we are now, 88.3 FM continues to grow in its outreach. This break is also brought to you by SPB After Dark. Thursdays, 8 to 9 p.m., hosted by SPB board members Joey and Eula. SPB After Dark goes behind the scenes of all sorts of events. Find out what's to come. Find out what it's like working for SPB and much, much more. While bringing on different SPB members each episode, there's always someone new to look forward to. Tune in to Thursday, 8 p.m. for SPB After Dark. That first pitch of the warm-up hits, uh, hits the fence in front of us again, Kalen. Not a great look, you know, to have your first warm-up pitch go over the head of the catcher. Yeah, honestly, seeing as this is Borg's first, I think one of her, her first seasons with U of D Mercy, it definitely does not It could definitely be nerf. Her racket, yes. especially up against such a good team. Yes, I agree. And, and also in, in the situation that she's being placed in, it's not like, you know, where some newer players get to hop in at the beginning of an inning. She's being put in a runners at the corner situation, down 4-0 with only one out with the player that had a home run earlier in this game up to bat. So it's a tough situation. You're not going to want to leave anything hanging over the plate for Ruhlman or we might see another one go over the wall. 
Honestly, though, I do think this situation shows just how much trust U of D Mercy has in Borg. They would not have sent her in if they could not trust she couldn't handle it. Borg throws one in low for the first pitch. I agree, Kayla. It does take a lot of trust, especially as a newer player, to throw a pitcher into a situation like this. But it seems that the U of D staff likes to get a lot of their players in into situations like this to try to train them, you know, for upcoming situations. Pitch number two is high, 2-0. And, oh. and Borg having a little trouble finding the strike zone to begin this pitching stand. Ruhlman steps back in. The DH. Pitch on the way from Borg. In. Hard off the bat. At short, and that one's bobbled by the second baseman on the double play attempt, and that's going to bring another runner home. OU's got five now, and it's gonna leave it's gonna leave Kritzka safe at second. So with another crazy turn of events, the errors are starting to gather up now. So one thing that we, we noticed was standing very solid was this defense of U of D, and now they're starting to break down. Honestly, they need to go back to the basics and just lock in, play their game, play it well. I mean, that should have been the end of the inning. Borg had a nice, especially with someone like Roman lining it to shortstop. That's an easy double play flip, but they, they don't tend to their basic, you know, knowledge, of just, and they drop the ball, and it's just an unfortunate situation to be in. That first pitch is popped foul. Good. Fantastic read there by Jaden Laura. She's able to get out number two. So a very quick caraway pops out, and that was probably the best-case scenario for this U of D team. A short fly out to first base foul allows no runners to advance, keeping him at first and second, and gets out number two. So looking to kind of squeeze out of this inning as Maggie Murphy steps in. Murphy one for two on the night. Pitch now coming from Borg. That one bounces, and it's going to deflect. It's going to deflect off the foot of Maggie Murphy, sending her to first. That hit by pitch loads the bases. Not the greatest situation now. Only, or still two down though. So, with Cam and Troyer up to bat, I mean, that's not the woman you want up. Two for two on the night. She's had a great day, including an RBI earlier in this game. So Troyer trying to add to that total with the bases juiced, two down. This bottom of the fourth inning has taken a while for U of D to get through. Pitch on the way from Borg. Low. And ball number one. It's going to be time called by coach for Oakland as they pinch run at first brace, taking Murphy out of the game. And Leia Benwitz will check in at first base as the pinch runner. Bienovich at first base. Thank you. Now... Standing in, bases loaded. Up to bat is Troyer. Pitch on the way from Borg. That's a called strike. One and one now. And the wind bringing up a lot of dust here. Something we've brought up a lot is the dust that we've seen, or the wind that we've had despite the beautiful day outside and time called there by the umpire to let it move through. Wind picking up again. Troyer with it at her back. Now would be the time to get one in the air. That one's rocketed all the way to left field. And that's going to bring in two. Beautiful play there. Bienovich heading over to third. And that's going to be a double. And Troyer rockets one to the outfield. Bringing in two runs. Score now 7-0. Runners at second and third. With Jenna Johnston up to bat. That's going to be the 11th hit of the night and still none on the U of D side. Troyer, if I'm not mistaken, has a chance here to end this game. I believe the mercy rule is eight for softball. So a run here could end it. Going to deflect it off the bat, hits the ground. It's going to go foul. Oh, in one count. Two down. Johnston stepping into bat. She's 0 for 2 on the day, so she's due up for a hit. 
Kayla, I like to use statistics a lot when watching baseball, and I, I think looking at someone's average and looking how they're doing in the day can prove a lot. So saying someone's due up can help a lot. Pitch just wide. Keep in mind, op no runner at first base, so a walk here would load the bases and not bring a runner home with Maddie Harrington sitting on deck. Pitch on the way. Popped up, and that may be the end of the inning as it flies over the head, off the glove of the second baseman. And runner comes in for Oakland. That brings the score up to 8-0. And that is... Oh, I'm sorry. They got to get through five innings. That's what it is. Yes, the... Uh... The fans to my left helping me out. So nine runs now, but only in the bottom of the fourth means that U of D needs to get out of this inning and means they need to put on at this rate, they would need to put on two. They would need two runs in the in the top half of the fifth. But as we've said before, Kayla, Cindy Campbell still remains on the mound. So that's going to be a tough player to get through. Now stepping in is Harrington. She's one for two today. Pitch on the way from Borg. Borg struggling so far. That one just inside. Almost scrapes the knees of Harrington. Runner now at second for Oakland. That is... Jenna Johnston. Pitch on the way from board. Lined out to deep right field, and that's going to get through. Brings home Johnston and going for three. And a triple on the way from Harrington. And the Oakland Bats are flying now, Kayla. Yeah. What a play there. Easy triple. Did even have to slide in stand up triple for OU. What a play. In Oakland. Setting in. A lot of discussion here with the umpire and U of D's staff. But they will continue. And now... Mia Kamepka steps in for OU. Kamepka stepping in as the pinch hitter for her first at bat of the night. Pitch on the way just outside. Actually calls strike one. That brings the count to 0-1 with two down. And the pitch on the way from Borg. Oh, in one is the count. And that's chopped over to second, picked up, and that'll be the end of the fifth inning. And that's going to bring U of D back up to bat now. And down 0 oh, 10, down 10 runs right now. Detroit Mercy is going to have to try to do... They're going to have to put on Leaf 3 if they want this game to not end in a Mercy. I, I think it's anything winning by more than eight runs after the fifth inning is the Mercy rule for college softball. I've seen it be implemented a few times. First time getting caught, caught off guard. They got a couple different rules with it. But returning to the mound will be Sydney Campbell. Ace so far, she has a no-hitter going. And you'd have to think that this is going to be a very tough top of the fifth for Detroit Mercy. And we are going to stay with you during this half inning. This break is brought to you by Round Ball Radio. Join DJ Deshaun Fridays at 5 p.m. for an all-inclusive talk and an analysis on basketball. Whether you're a fan of the NBA, NCAA, or Oakland Athletics, Round Ball Radio has you covered. Tune in to 88.3 FM WXOU Fridays 5 to 6 for Round Ball Radio. 
Just wanna, break. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're, I was just going to read another. It's You can go. Uh, I was just going to say that, honestly, with a score looking like this, Detroit Mercy is got, ought to be at least a little afraid right now. But they've got to be able to work through that fear if they I, want to bring it. I mean, Detroit Mercy, they're going to need three runs to even keep this game going. And so far, they don't even have any hits in this game. So, And, and with Campbell still on the mound, Oakland not electing to put this game's fate up to anyone else other than their ace. Pitch on the way from Campbell. Chopped foul down the first baseline. And count now 0-2 on the six hitter. Shortstop Jada Davis. She is 0-1 for 1 today with an at-bat here in the top of the fifth. Looking to put the first hit on the board for Detroit Mercy. Pitch on the way from Campbell. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Down goes Davis. Campbell continues dealing. That'll be her sixth strikeout of the night. Up to bat now. Amanda Schick takes the plate. At bat number five, the third Schick. baseman. Up now pitch on the way. Coming from Campbell. And that flies in there for strike one. Campbell taking no prisoners right now, flying through this order. Not even taking any risks, putting people on base. 0-1 pitch. That goes in for a ball, 1-1. For anyone just tuning in, we are here in the top of the fifth inning from the OU softball field. Oakland leading this game 10-0 against the Detroit Mercy Titans. Detroit Mercy looking to avoid... Losing this game on a mercy rule, as the rule here in softball is any. Down by eight after five innings is the ball game. And that and that pitch is sent to right field for an out. And that's out number two. And Detroit Mercy is down to their last batter. Jada Davis steps in. Steps in. Sorry, that's Jaden, Jaden Laura steps in, the first baseman. We've seen a lot of action from her at first base. She's played fantastic defense tonight. First pitch low. One and zero count. Campbell looking to try to shut this game out with a no hitter against this one and twenty five Detroit Mercy squad. U of D looking to break the thirteen game losing streak. And if not today, they're going to have two chances tomorrow against Oakland at a double header here at the Oakland softball field. That game will not be here on WXOU, but you can always come down to watch the game. Sorry, actually, pitch number two on the way. That's off target. And Campbell locking in right now. Pitch on the way. I'm sorry, that game, the doubleheader tomorrow for OU softball will be the end of the Cancer Awareness Series here at Oakland. The Metro Series between OU and Detroit Mercy. Campbell pitch on the way, chopped to second base. High hop off against Johnston, and that ball will head into center field. That's gonna be the first hit of the day going to Davis. And U of D's not out of this game yet. Honestly, that hit just might be the confidence boost that Detroit Mercy needed. And finally, they tack their mark on the board. And up to bat now for U of D is catcher Alyssa Adams. Adams, the ninth hitter. So if she can get on base here, Kayla, this could be a great situation because you get you bring the top half of that order back up, the better hitters of this team. Campbell really going to look to get through this. And wave and a miss there by Adams. Brings the count to 0-2. So now U of D is down to their last strike. Runner at first base, Jaden Laura at to bat. Adams, that pitch is fouled off to the left, staying alive here against Campbell. Campbell looking to try to complete this shutout today. Campbell, pitch on the way. 0-2, two, two down. Showing bunt, Adams. She pulls back. That one's lined to second, fielded. 
and tossed over to first, and that's the end of the inning. Good play there by Campbell. We'll end the inning and appear to end the ball game. And that's it. And what a game here for OU softball as this one comes to an end with a 10-0 victory. We thank you all for tuning in here on 88.3 FM WXOU and on WXOU's YouTube. Feel free to turn in, or tune in to WXOU's YouTube for video and coverage of a post-game interview with our sideline, or I'm sorry, our color reporter, Kayla Snell, and a player from this OU softball game. We thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of your day.